Hello and welcome to Relaxation Hypnosis for Stress, Anxiety and Panic Attacks. My name is Jason Newland. My website is jasonnewland.com. Please only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes. So, if you like what I do, please visit my website. You can leave a testimonial uh, telling pe- other people you know, how you benefit. You can leave comments. All of my recordings are on the website, all organised by category and all that stuff. There's about 1,087 or something like that recordings, including, of course, all of these sessions as well. And if you wanted to send me a gift via PayPal or anything like that, it's also much appreciated. So this recording has been inspired by an audio book that I was listening to earlier today and it's uh, the book is about positive psychology which is a subject that I've been studying lately I'm very interested in it hoping to do a master's degree in the subject as well and I was listening to the audio book because <laughs> to be fair it's easier than reading. I like to listen to audio books. I've, I'm all. I suppose, maybe like you, I like to listen. I get something different. I do like to read as well. But sometimes it's nice to listen. And um, although I do say only listen when you can safely close your eyes. Um, when I listen to audiobooks, quite often I might be on a computer and doing other stuff. And sometimes I'll lay down on the bed and listen. But what was being said in this book, it wasn't concentrating necessarily on anxiety or anything like that. But it did touch upon the subject. And there was a statement that was made which really grabbed my attention. And the statement was, apparently it's a famous statement, I've never heard it before, but it's probably more in psychology places, I don't know. But the statement is, zebras don't get ulcers, or zebras don't get ulcers as in stomach ulcers and I kind of my ears pricked up a little bit like what What are they talking about zebras don't get ulcers and then she explained the lady that was reading the book that she wrote zebras don't worry about stuff They deal with it when it happens. Their fight or flight, well, it's it's flight, isn't it, with zebras? I mean, they're not going to take on a lion and have a fight with a lion. But that sense of urgency, you know, where all the muscles, the blood moves from the stomach to the muscles and you know, the adrenaline kick starts and that tunnel focus of getting the hell out of there away from that lion only happens when a lion turns up doesn't happen the rest of the time and that's the analogy in the sense of the difference between a zebra, I'm going to say zebra because that's how I pronounce it, 
it's how we pronounce it in England but I know that other countries may call it zebras so I just you know I can't keep changing it so I'm just going to say zebra that's why a zebra is compared to humans in the sense that we have that fight or flight response kicking in when we don't need it even people that don't have issues with stress or anxiety or panic I'm talking about the whole population pretty much in the human not everybody but we're thinking about what ifs worrying about stuff that might happen being ready for something bad to happen when there's not necessarily evidence that it will and I know that that level raises a heck of a lot with people that are perhaps struggling with anxiety and stress and panic I mean clearly it's a much much higher level but as I said in the past on these recordings when I had the panic the panic attacks my main worry the main thing I was scared of was having panic attacks in fact I could pretty much say that's the only thing I was worried about I thought I was going to die as well even though it was a panic attack and I knew that it was a panic attack and I got medical advice and got checked out and was told that I was fine physically and it was just a panic attack just that word just it's very dismissive and I used to say that to myself it's just a panic attack well if I'm dismissing my own feelings why would I expect other people to take them seriously so I started to think what if we became more like a zebra just the idea of it that's what I'm thinking and I don't mean physically I mean just that part of the brain that the zebra has that's not worried until it needs to be now I've known a lot of people that were very relaxed very uh, experienced meditators I was involved in Buddhism for a long time and I've met some people that you think that nothing would have phased them at all but what I, noticed, what I noticed with some of those people is there was zero um, urgency even at times when a bit of urgency was possibly required not in an emergency situation but just almost like the going in slow motion and I'd wonder if they were actually a zebra that if they saw a lion they might not actually run which would mean they'd get eaten so although being really chilled out and relaxed and calm and practically vertical may be an ideal goal for some people because I think it's that thing of you know when you're really hot 
it's say in the summer really in the winter is it? it's in the summer you're really really hot and the idea of being covered in ice cubes actually seems appealing when in reality being covered in ice cubes would probably be horrible <laughs> you know it might be nice for a second or when you're really cold and maybe outside the idea of stepping inside a sauna and just thinking oh I'll stay in that sauna for hours you wouldn't want to because once you got in there you kind of would be too hot so it's as if our brains want the complete opposite which isn't really logical it's not really what we want I'm I'm suggesting so the idea is if you've got extreme stress extreme anxiety the idea and I used to think this I just want to be completely relaxed all the time and that is not useful being able to relax at will is a great skill to have but also being able to you know act quickly also is incredibly important for example if you're if you see someone crossing the road and there's a car coming shouting to them to move or they're in front of you grabbing them pulling them out of the road quick reflexes can be very very useful slow reflexes not so much sometimes so this zebra mind and it's only the part of the mind that part the worrying part in fact it doesn't worry it acts on reality a zebra acts and responds based on what is actually happening in that moment so of course there wouldn't be much good for planning or preparing so we've got the capability to prepare ourselves which is a great skill a very useful thing to be able to do but when you connect worrying to it worrying about all those things that probably won't ever happen I just thought about it you know I could spend the next 30 years of my life walking on the pavement scared really scared that a car's going to drive onto the pavement and run me over that could be my and just have an awful time every time I'm walking on the pavement for the next 30 years or I can not care not even think about it not even give it any energy and if one day a car does come on the pavement and run me over and I don't see it then or if I see a car coming then I can act then I can put all my energy into that to just be continuously thinking as I have in the past 
on public transport and stuff that something bad's going to happen when there's a big chance that it's not there's probably more chance of winning the lottery a few times in your lifetime than being in a train crash or a bus crash of course they happen every now and then but so rarely so I wonder what a zebra would feel as they're walking down the pavement no concern I imagine probably be wondering why everyone's staring at him but and to have that lack of fear actually appeals to me I think it's good to be cautious at times but how do you find the balance and I'm talking about a zebra mind a zebra's brain I could talk to you about a ferret's brain or a dog's brain a dog will happily run around the road run around the streets in fields completely unconcerned about anything don't care about the traffic because they don't know about the traffic and most of the time they'll come home safely but they're not worried about that kind of stuff they're kind of in the moment loving it and this ferret I've got a ferret called Andre he's not interested he doesn't worry about anything I don't think and I'm not a mind reader but I've been studying him for four years it's been like my little psychological project just studying his behaviour his responses I don't think there's there's any worrying in him there's no panic there's no fear he doesn't have fear the only thing that makes him jump is motorbikes you know the really loud motorbikes that let off like a big bang that makes him jump but things like thunder fireworks none of that stuff even affects him doesn't even wake him up he's not scared of anything if he saw a lion, he'd probably try and fight the lion. He wouldn't last long, but it, it's not scared. So in a way, that's almost a ridiculous, un, you know, being fearless is could be dangerous. Walking across the road without looking is a stupid thing to do for anyone. You need to look before you cross the road. Just preparation, but without fear. I'm not scared when I cross the road. I don't expect the car to hit me because I look before I cross, and there's no reason a car would hit me. The idea of the zebra only acting when it needs to. 
and actually enjoying itself the rest of the time feeling relaxed the rest of the time not worrying imagine what that would be like to not worry to literally to not be concerned about stuff that may or may not happen and the only things that you actually focus on in the future are things that you want to happen the nice things and that's it you're only focusing on the things that you're going to enjoy happening which is that would change the way you think about things change the the way you feel physically inside you can test it now just imagine in your mind and think about tomorrow and think about the nice things that you want to happen focus solely on that the things that you would like to happen things that you expect to happen that you're going to enjoy that you're going to appreciate and just focus on that those things and notice how you physically feel Notice how it changes the way that you feel inside. How easily your emotions transform into something different from stress and worry to something could call it positive it's definitely closer to reality because the reality is if you expect things to go well they're more likely to go well just the way things are if you meet someone for the first time and you are told all these wonderful things about them you're going to be pleased to meet them and you're going to be friendly to them and they're going to be friendly back to you but if someone fills your mind with all these negative things about this person before you've even met them you're going to feel very differently about them and when well, you probably won't even want to meet them and when you do meet them you possibly won't be very friendly like minimum friendliness and they possibly will respond with minimal friendliness and you'll think oh they're not very friendly that's right what they said about them just reminds me years ago I went to there was a film I wanted to watch a friend of mine saw it before I did and he told me all these negative things about it telling me how rubbish it was and all this stuff and when I watched it I didn't enjoy it that might be maybe I'm very easily influenced possibly but regardless of that it tainted my experience because that negativity clouded my own judgement of just watching the movie and deciding for myself and in reality I wanted to watch it and I was preparing 
I expected it to be funny. I expected it to be good. But having this little, my friend whisper, well, he didn't whisper in my ear, but saying, oh, it's not very funny, it's not very good. It's a bit of a letdown. It had an effect on my experience of that film. Another thing I remember, I used to work in a comedy club, and I remember seeing more than on one occasion, a few times, not that many times, but a few times, I'd see a comedian on the Friday night and the Saturday night. And one particular time I remember, this comedian went on stage on a Friday night and they basically booed him off the stage the audience and I thought he's rubbish absolutely rubbish Saturday night he was back on stage different audience same club one of the best gigs I've ever seen same material If I hadn't seen the Saturday night, I don't think anything that anyone could ever say would have changed my opinion. So I just heard a bunch of birds. Sounds like ducks or going past geese. That was weird. So we're influenced, or at least I am, and I think other people are too, influenced by like one off situations like one-off learning which can be what a panic attack can be a phobia you do something once and maybe it doesn't work out and you think oh that's how it's always going to be there's the old saying isn't it you never get a chance to make a, uh, a, you know, another first impression or first impressions last first impressions only last if you never meet the person again because nobody is how they were when you first meet them if you get to know them you get to find out more about them I wonder what it would be like if we started to think that way about our own experiences, things that maybe were just done once and were generalised. Perhaps we haven't given ourselves an opportunity to correct it, to correct that experience the same as I, the way I did with that comedian. I saw him on the Friday, I saw him on the Saturday. I wasn't looking forward to seeing him on the Saturday, but I was working so I had no choice. And he was brilliant. I really couldn't believe it. So he had a chance to make a second impression. And that Friday night is wiped out. 
it's just the, the Saturday night completely wiped away Friday night so I wonder what has happened since some of those experiences that have maybe left a, a lasting impression that's maybe contributed towards anxiety, stress, panic what other things have happened since then that actually when you focus on them these positive experiences because we all have them actually when you focus on them you realise that the generalisations that you've made about yourself Are just that generalizations not fixed in stone and it's just general and generalizing is something that's really useful in life but it's also very unhealthy at times very limiting at times especially when we're that generalizing is getting in the way of our own happiness so the zebra drinking water out of the pond or whatever and with all his friends I guess they might not all get on with each other but I'm just generalizing and a lion turns up and they all you know someone shouts to him oi Bob there's a lion over there and he says oh okay let's go straight away bang run and as soon as they all stop running they just go back to what they're doing They're not worried about the next time they see a lion. They're not concerned or stressing about the last time they saw a lion. It happened. And thinking about it isn't going to really help them unless they can learn something from it. I think in my situation I think if I was going to be a zebra I'd make sure that I was always standing next to someone that could run slower than me but that's just the way my brain thinks that's, that's bad isn't it but imagine having that mind though that mind where you're not concerned about stuff that hasn't happened you're not worrying about stuff that has and you're left with what's happening now and someone, someone might say yeah but if all we're doing is focusing on this moment then that's a bit you know it's a bit boring it's a bit you know that sounds a bit yeah it's a bit tedious and but I'm not saying that actually all of us have got huge numbers of nice memories even if we pretend we don't we do I had a fairly rubbish childhood at times really bad at times but recently I've been getting in touch with the reality of the fact that there were some really good times as well Christmas when I was a kid when I was 
between ages and seven and fourteen or whatever were really good. Christmas time was great. Birthdays were great. Bonfire night, Guy Fawkes night was great. When there was snow outside, we had fun, built igloos. When it was really sunny, we used to go down the beach. We had good times. I think back to when I was 16, working in a chip shop. And for years, all I focused on was the negative part of it. But actually, I had some fun times. I was just starting to go out to pubs and drinking, getting a bit tipsy, singing in the street, making new friends, dreaming about the future, thinking about how wonderful things will be. So even then, going through because even then I, I was, my mood swings were up and down and but thinking about nice things for the future and it's an obvious statement what I'm going to say is so much better than or nicer than thinking about imagining crappy times for the future I mean what is the point in that Because we can't change the past, obviously. We can change our perception of the past. We can focus more on those nice times from the past. And it might even take writing down a list of things that happened that you liked, that you enjoyed. It might have been in school, it might have been at a club you went to. One of my really nice memory I've got is when I was doing karate and one of the the adults, because I was a kid, one of the adults was getting married and he asked me and another kid that was there to hold swords up in our, in our full karate gear, to hold swords up crossed above the church as they left the church and had photographs taken of us. I loved that. Loved it. Brilliant. When I was nine, I was on a television show. The whole of my school was. Loved it. Was singing songs. Great fun. Getting my gradings in karate. Always got a first class pass. I loved it. I felt so good. So there, and there's so many, especially at my age, 49, I've got a lot of memories that I can tap into if I just put the energy and if I'm willing to do it. Now you're listening to this, you may be, you may, you may be 90, you may be 20, you might, I don't know any age in between you could be younger than that we've all generally got memories of the past that are nice so it's about focusing on things that we like so if you're about to go to a restaurant and you know you're going to Let's say a Chinese restaurant tomorrow night with someone that you like or maybe it's a, a work out in or friends, family, whatever and you're thinking about what food are you going to have I'm very certain that you're not going to be thinking about the food you don't like When you're thinking about ordering a pizza, you're not thinking about the toppings that you don't like. Because 
it wouldn't make sense. It just, you know, it just doesn't, it's not, it's not just that it isn't logical, but it just probably wouldn't happen. Automatically wouldn't happen. So when you think about the future, even if, I mean, it's all made up, isn't it? The past isn't even real. It's been proven that our memories of the past aren't correct. We remember some of it. We don't remember all of it. And some memories get mixed up. So, the future it's imagination, that's all it is. So if you think, if you're going to read a book you choose a book to read by an author what do you choose? It doesn't have to be a uh, Fiction, it could be non fiction, educational, it could be anything. But you choose, I'm just guessing this, but you choose something that you like, you choose a subject that you're interested in, you choose an author that you like to read. Let's say some people like to read Stephen King books or the Harry Potter film, you know, books. You choose something that you know you're going to enjoy. You don't just choose a random book. And think about memories, you know. If you read a book by... I'm trying to think of a, an author off the top of my head, but... Let's say Sue Townsend, who wrote the Adrian Mole books... If you read one of her books and you didn't like it, what's the chances of you buying another book by Sue Townsend? So if there's a memory that you don't like, why think about other memories that are similar? Why would you read another book from the same author that you didn't enjoy their book for, you know? the one that you read didn't like it why waste your time reading another one although it could be good but you know generally if I read a book by an author that I didn't like the book I wouldn't read another book by them I think it's a standard kind of recipe for choosing a book and if you was going to write your own book If you're going to write your own future, would you write a load of crap? Would you write a load of horrible stuff happening? Or would you write nice things happening? If you're going to write your book and whatever you wrote in it is going to happen next. It's going to happen over the next year. It's going to happen over the next 10 years. The next 30 years. You're not going to add. You're not going to put illness in there. Are you? You're not going to put in um, catastrophe and things to be concerned about. Things to worry about. Are you going to make yourself a worrier? Are you going to add panic attacks into that book? into that story, into that future? Or are you going to make it really positive? Positive for you, where things work out really well. Where you're happy. Where you enjoy your life. Free of unnecessary stress or anxiety free of panic attacks because that stuff's in the past because at the moment it is in the past 
It can't be anywhere else. Everything is in the past. The only thing we have right now is me talking and you listening at this moment. All those memories are gone. If you think about the memories as a DVD collection of movies or television shows. And if you're like me, you've watched a lot of television, a lot of movies over the years. I've watched thousands and thousands of movies and millions of hours of television probably. So when you think back, in a sense, you bring out the library, your library of DVDs. Oh, I'm going to watch, I'm going to watch back. And you know, every day for an hour, you're going to watch one movie, or an hour and a half, two hours, whatever. So every day in the future, you're going to watch one movie from the past whether it be Naked Gun, Titanic, whatever. And you've got a choice of all the movies that you've ever watched. Are you going to choose a movie that you didn't like? I think the answer is no on that one. You're going to choose a movie that you enjoyed the first time round. And that's like memories. Got so many choices. So many things that have happened. Got a choice of things to think about. And what we think about affects how we feel. And how we feel affects how we act, which affects our future happiness so if you are got on a a party to go to or a wedding to go to and it's not really your thing I'm not a big fan of big public events at all but if you're going to write a little story about how it went wouldn't it be more enjoyable to write a nice story especially if you knew that what you wrote was going to happen you'd write something nice wouldn't you I went there, felt confident, felt relaxed had fun dealt with everything easily was surprised at how well it went I read in a book a while back it's from uh, an author called Yalom Irvin Yalom and he said it wasn't his quote but he he quoted it from someone else if what is it? If you came back, if you had to come back and relive your life, and you knew a million percent that you can have to come back and relive your life exactly the way you lived it this time, how would you spend the rest of your life? And I kind of had to read that sentence a couple of times before it really sunk in. Because on a on a kind of a basic level, it's like, well, I'll do this and I'll do that. And then I thought, wait a minute. You're going to want to enjoy the experience. 
make as many wonderful experiences and be happy, feel relaxed not going through trauma and stress not worrying about things that will probably never happen yeah I think it's uh quite a nice quite a nice idea so your future my future all of our futures it's up to us and I don't mean that in an unrealistic way I can't get up tomorrow and uh hire a private jet to take me to Dubai I can't do that tomorrow I know that I could imagine I can do it and it'll probably feel quite nice but even though it's unrealistic it's a hell of a lot better than thinking I'm going to get up tomorrow and I'm going to feel crappy and I'm going to get a bill come through the door and it's going to ask for lots of money and that's unlikely to happen as well to be fair but what makes you feel better in the moment as you think about it I'm not saying you know that we should all be fantasizing about stuff unrealistically glorious things but hey if we're spending our time fantasizing about extremely horrible things that are never going to happen then the only difference is you're going to feel happier that's still a fantasy but you'll feel differently than you did before And starting to plan the future, the future that you want. A future where it doesn't have stress or anxiety or panic. Because you've done that, you've been there. It's boring, isn't it? It's boring. It's not interesting. It's not exciting. Anxiety, stress, and panic is not exciting at all. It's painful boring and I'm sure that you you can't be bored with it anymore I can't don't want that stuff no more I want to feel relaxed I don't expect to feel relaxed the whole time that's not realistic but I want to be able to deal with things and I want to be able to look forward to things I want to think about the past choose something that you want to think about there's lots to choose from just like all those movies that you've watched in the past you wouldn't keep a collection on your shelf of stuff that you didn't like what would be the point of that there's a reason why people keep photo albums of happy events family events birthdays weddings christenings all that kind of stuff Christmas or whatever you don't have pictures of funerals don't have a oh this is uh, grandma's funeral yeah this is uh, just as the as the coffin is lowered down this is her in a hospital bed as she's dying no we don't have pictures like that we have nice pictures we want to remember nice things 
doesn't mean that horrible things don't happen. Of course they do. Doesn't mean we need to focus on that stuff. We can, we've got all those movies that we enjoyed watching. We've got a photo album. It's in our mind, but it's more than any photo album that's ever been created. More pictures, memories of nice experiences, the first times of doing things, the first kiss, the first dance, the first time you drove a, your own car maybe. The list is endless and it's personal for each person as well. So let's maybe test being like a zebra. When it comes to stress and worrying about things, let's leave it to when it happens and deal with it when it happens. Maybe test it out. Test it for a day, test it for a week. Just see how it feels. I'm going to do that. See how it feels. See how you feel differently. Embrace the zebra. And that's why zebras don't get ulcers. Because they don't worry about stuff. They don't need to. So that brings us to the end of another of these recordings. I hope that you're well. And I'll speak to you very soon. And remember to be kind to yourself. Because you deserve to be happy. Lots of love. Bye.